Well, hello everyone, uh, Keith Secure here, and welcome to the fifth episode of Adastra. Last time, if I remember correctly, because it's been a, a while uh, IRL since I've uh, uh, recorded a video, or even looked uh, at the... <laughs> at, um, what's it called again? At Streamlabs in any ways, so it, it feels weird. Um, the, this week and next week, which is, uh, for you, the week of the, from the 5th to the 11th and the 12th to the 18th, I have a lot of exams, uh, so I, I don't have much time to record. Right now it's the 9th uh, of December, I have like a bit of time to record a video, but that's probably going to be the only one uh, this week. And next week, uh, it's probably going to be recording only at the end of the week. Also, I'm really tired because I've had a very few... S my sleeping schedule has been terrible uh, for the past three days, so I'm kind of dead inside, uh, ev even more than per usual, so if I don't react as much as I do usually, even though it's not much, uh, well, I'm sorry about that, but I, I think I, I still need to record a, a video anyway to kind of respect my schedule, so I have to do it even if it's not on my best uh, my best day. I've been I've been better <laughs> to record. I hope you guys are, are doing well, and if you are actually doing exams right now, well, props to you. And without further ado, uh, let's just get right into it. Uh, so let me just. Okay, so Anik has just entered uh, his room again. Any brain. Bring, bring, bring food with him, so that's good. Oh, hello, sorry, I suppose Alex didn't tell you that they set these outside the door on the 15th hour. He treat you well? Yeah, it was nice. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much him for now. He seems really nice. Anarchus wheels the card up to the sofa, then flops back onto it next to me, making the whole thing shake. Ugh, that was a long day. Uh, I can relate. Are you okay? Amicus opens one eye at me. Barely. I had to go over math today, and my head feels as if it's, as if it's going to explode. Didn't help that Balbus kept cracking me over the head with a stick when I answered wrong. Well, that sounds harsh. Don't worry, it was nothing compared to the one you gave me. <laughs> Thanks for reminding me. Hamicus smirks and I can't help but smile back at his teasing. He seems to have become more comfortable around me with how relaxed he is. I'm sorry about that. Don't be, and stop apologizing for it. Now let's wash, wash and eat. My stomach's felt hollow since breakfast. Probably still gonna feel guilty about that, because, I mean, at one point... I mean, Hanukkah's already has started to be a bit nicer than he was when he kidnapped us, so... I feel like with more time gonna be passing, I think we'll be start apologizing more and regretting this even more. We both go to the restroom and to rinse our paws slash hands in the sink before heaping our plates with food. It's more of the same with bread and meat and olives, but there's also a good amount of other vegetables and fruit that I have a hard time identifying. Hankus shows me how to combine the fruit and cheese on the bread. Fruit and... Fruit and cheese on bread? Okay and I find myself really starting to like the smelly spread, as long as I ignore the smell. 
compared to breakfast, Anakis really wolfs down a, a lot of food. He probably ends up eating about three times as much as me. I mean, he's kind of buff, so expect him to. All the while, he tells me about his scary instructor and how he punishes him way more than Cassius. Well, does he usually get the answers right? Well, yeah, but he should help me understand rather than smack my ears. That's true. That doesn't help anything unless he has the information in his stick and he's bashing it into my brain somehow. Don't worry, I hate math too. Well, I'm better in other things like literature and history. Ha! <laughs> Cassius is hopeless at remembering remem remembering battles. I actually like literature and history more than math, so I can relate to that. Anakis flexes a bicep. And he can forget about wrestling. He could never beat me in a fight. Yeah, I wouldn't think so. He, yeah, he's kind of uh, scrawny. So, yes, he can have all the maths that he wants. Trials don't involve that anyway. What are these trials you guys keep talking about? Anakis takes a big gulp of wine, gasping when he finally pulls the goblet away from his face. What Kato, what Kato is considering using to decide the next emperor. Essentially three trials. Music and dance, rhetoric, and finally, combat. And whoever wins those becomes emperor? Well, whoever wins two out of three, combat is last so that if one of us wins the first two, it won't come to that. I'm really just hoping that Kato chooses me in the next few days now that I've seen you. But if the trials do happen, you have nothing to worry about. Amicus grins at me confidently. I don't. I'm better than Cassius in at least two of those things. Perhaps even in music and dance. You know, I'd believe you. But one thing I know about you is how um, overly confident you are when it comes to certain things. Why do you say that? Our entire experience in the ship, maybe? That's different. I was doing some, something I, I didn't really understand. I didn't understand my studies, aside from math. Anakis leans back finally, one paw on his stomach. Anyway, how was your day? Did Alex show you around? Yep, he did. Anakis starts to grab the remaining food to set aside on its own plate. Yeah, I realize that there isn't, isn't much to do. Uh, yeah, it was a bit of a bad day. I have tomorrow off from studies, though, so we can do something entertaining. Like what? Oh, I don't know. Go swimming, go to the bath, talk, you name it. Maybe eventually we can go to the city, too. The city outside? Well, everything's outside. Duh. I mean, the one that I can see across the lake. Guess that one, Adastra City, the capital of our empire. Oh, isn't it kind of small for that? I mean, it looks really nice, but it kind of just looks like an average-sized average city. Amicus frowns. I think it's quite large. How big are cities on Earth? I shrug. I know, pretty big. Millions of people, well, depending on the cities. Amicus raises an eyebrow. Millions? Uh, yeah. I wonder if the lingua is translating everything correctly. Why? How big is Adastra? City? Just over 5 million. The whole population is 80 million. That's nothing. Oh. How many humans are there? Like, 7 billion? <laughs> it just chokes. Yeah, that's a lot of people. What? Is that a lot? It's preposterous. Do you not have a population control measures put in place? Well, not in most places. That's the case in, like, China, but... That's probably it. Amicus shakes his head. Well, you are parentless, so I guess it makes sense your species are might, might be so... misguided? Oh, thanks. 
Ankis seems to try very hard to choose the last word even though he's still being very condescending. Hey, I, I, I don't want children, that's not my fault. He seems to notice my annoyance though. Well, is your species doing well? Is your plan able to sustain such a population? Sort of. I guess there are problems. Amicus strokes his chin. Well, I suppose when I become emperor I could ask a parent about your species. The whole thing is a real mystery, but it's clear that we must have overlooked your people somehow. He smiles at me. Maybe you could even bring you into our fold again. Wow, hang on a second. Images of Roman spaceships descending from the heavens to enslave the human race all because of me flashed through my mind. You know, Axe told me about what you do to the other sa sapiens. It doesn't sound like something humans would want to be a part of. What did he tell you? The whole enslavement th thing. Enslavement? What you do to your children. Well, that's a harsh word for it. No, it's the right word. Humans have done the whole indentured servant thing back on Earth. It never turned out well for the servant. And because his ears go down a bit. And as misguided as humans might be, we're at, we've at least abolished slavery. I noticed Hemicus' ears turning red. Maybe he never expected to be lectured on ethics by a human. Uh, well, I do mean to ch change things a bit when I become emperor. A bit? I mean, things can't just be changed all at once. It has to be gradual, okay? Because if you're gonna... Change it from slave to no slave, I think it's gonna take a bit of time, especially... Since... especially how without a wolf's population seems to be. Hmm. Ankis flicks his tail in annoyance at me. Listen, I agree with you. We've been trying to change the way we've treated our children for generations. My grandfather and father both worked towards this. Well, while that's messed up and definitely wrong, I think the intelligence thing might be even worse. What intelligence thing? The grimace on Amicus' face tells me that he might already know the answer. The way you stunted intelligence in the children you uplifted. Amicus is silent for a moment. I can tell that all of this is making him very uncomfortable. Yeah, maybe let's change subjects. subjects. I have to ask myself again how I got to this point, sitting on a sofa debating ethics with a prospective Emperor Wolf. He finally folds his arms and uffs. Again, I agree with you on all of this. Well, mission accomplished. I don't like the way we've treated our children. In the end, I truly feel that becoming a more compassionate and united empire will lead to a better outcome for everyone. I have so much trouble reading and we're only 10 minutes in. It's going to take small steps, but understand that it's something I need to fix. And stop saying you like I did. I was born into this. I've come to realize how much of an open book Amicus is as a person, so I don't doubt his words. Well, as long as Cassius doesn't become emperor. Amicus snores. Not a chance. Always a chance. Well, if he does, it sounds like he's going to reverse all of that. And I'm saying there's no chance of it. Wait, how much has Alex been telling you? A lot. It was a short conversation, asking him about the Empire. I didn't, but I don't want to get Alex in trouble in case he wasn't just supposed to tell me. Cassius seems like a terrible person, by the way, and I'm not just talking about his personality. He wants to keep people enslaved. It's complicated. It's fairly traditional, but again, there's no chance. I sigh at the wolf's overconfidence, but he does know his brother far better than I do. Well, I'm at least glad I'm, that I'm behind the right wolf and getting myself home. The right wolf? Yeah, I can't imagine being under your brother. It's not probably not, not easy to do considering he's probably pretty small. 
And he's going to the plate that he's been building with food. Speaking of, I'm going to bring this to Alex in the garden. Do you want to accompany me? I run a hand through my hair, feeling the griminess for, for, from two days of no shower. Actually, could I use the shower while you're gone? I feel kind of gross. Oh yeah, sure. Uh, just step in and it starts up. There's a screen on the wall that controls temperature. There's a color spectrum that you can drag a finger across. I'll figure it out. Ah, right. Well, I should be back by the time you're finished. Okay. Yeah, I think... Yeah, compared to Earth, this universe has a lot of uh, bars that you need to fill for things with, with the, the gun that we used to knock out Amicus, which also had, had a power bar or something like this. Another shower with the temperature works like this too. I guess it would make things a lot more simpler, but <laughs> if it happened, uh, or if it already exists, I think if it happens, well, it would take, again, just as everything, a lot of time for it to arrive to a decent price for people with lesser money. Lesser, uh, less with less money to spend on, on their housing equipment. And with that, Hamicus balances his plate of food in his paws as he strides out of the room, leaving me to go into the bathroom. I quickly use the toilet again, suddenly glad I don't have it to use a public toilet like the ones I've, I've seen drawings of in my Roman history books. The shower is easy enough to understand, and the water is immediately warm and pleasant, so I don't have to bother with the temperature. There are several glass bottles of soap, so I choose the one that smells the best and give myself a quick wash. When I'm done, I grab a towel off the wall and dry off before wrapping it around my waist. I think about putting my clothes back on, but the idea of stepping back into that underwear has me hesitating. Instead, I open the door and am greeted to the sight of Anakis sitting on the edge of the bed, looking off to the side, a paw in his lap, holding a brush. His head snaps in my direction before he immediately averts his eyes. Sorry, sorry, I didn't mean to see. I thought you'd be dressed. Hey, it's fine. I've got the towel on. Slowly, Anakis turns his gaze back to me. I was drifting down my torso before immediately snapping back up again. Oh, uh, I thought you hated any sort of nudity. Not really, just uh, genitals. Even then, I don't hate it, just more private. Uh, I can't agree with that. <laughs> and he seems to be staring at me and start to feel a little self-conscious. Is everything okay? And he looks away again. Sorry, I'm, I'm just not used to seeing you like that. I've only seen humans with clothing, so I just sort of imagine you two always be that way. Well, my clothes are dirty, so I was going to ask you about maybe getting some clean ones, at least until you get, get me that tailor. Oh, of course, come. Send us some ropes on storage. Children's ropes, please. Yes, Amicus. Thanks. Children's robes. Again, I, I know they're talking about like the children and the parents thing, but reading like it as it as it is, especially with the children not being a capital letter with a C, feels like he's talking about kids' clothing. But again, again, he's not. Of course, I stand there awkwardly for another few seconds until Hamicus seems to snap back to reality again. He holds up the brush. Anyway. I thought maybe you'd like to be groomed, too. I feel it's only fair after what you did for me. Grooming skin is weird. Oh, well, it's only on my head. All the easier for me, then. Amicus grins. Oh, alright. I walk over to the bed and sit with my back to the wolf. Amicus edges the seating to face me more directly and starts to run the brush gently. Gently through my hair. 
was in silence for a bit, and I started to enjoy the feeling of the brushing, especially the way the firm bristles run across my scalp, giving me shivers up and down my neck. Sorry for talking so much earlier. I'm, I'm not used to being able to talk to someone. The past is a bit lonely, so having a friendly conversation with someone other than come is a bit of a novelty. Anicus chuckles. That was probably why I was having so much trouble focusing on my studies today. I was so excited to come back home and speak with you. Hearing that makes me feel a little bad for the wolf. I suppose being the prospective emperor doesn't allow you to have many friends, and being in such an empty palace definitely seems lonesome. I guess this is why Alex told me to basically the same thing. You're fine, and I didn't mean to be too harsh earlier. I know it's not your fault. No, I think we're on the same pinch on that one. All the more reason to un unite against Cassius, eh? Oh! As if it forgotten something, Anakin saw the paw comes around my side and on his palm I see two purple grapes. I managed to snatch a few of those from Alexia's hearing. He wasn't too happy about that, haha. <laughs> Want one? Seriously? I take one, more out of being nice to Amicus than anything, but when I bite into it, I can't help but notice how juicy and sweet it is. Amicus talks to me with a grape in his mouth. Hey! That's not, that's not nice. Hmm, I don't know why, but his grape hearing always tastes the best. By the way, if you don't mind, I invite Alex to our outing tomorrow. Cassius is going to be away to do some speeches. speeches and he's leaving Alex behind for once. Of course not, we got along well. I lean my head back, allowing the wolf to continue the brushing. Oh, fur. Hair, you call it. It's not like a wolf's fur, but it's rather, rather nice. I don't know why I'm... Um, like, usually when I record these videos, like, the first 5-10 minutes, I'm, like, fine with my pronunciation. But then, like, I started being so terrible, and, and even I can hear it. But I don't know how I can correct that. Thank you, Amicus. If you'd like, I can do this for you every day. I feel that's fair. I have to admit that I really like this, so I accept. Yeah, sure, it really feels nice. I hear some thumping sounds, and I imagine it's Amicus' tail wagging against the bed. So, wash so washing you, brushing you, and making you smell nice are all my duties. Well, that and accompanying me to important meetings and, and public outings. But all you do during those is stand there and look civilized. Yeah, that's what you, what you all keep telling me. This all seems pretty easy. Though, there is one thing you can do for me before I go to bed. <laughs> Care to, to elaborate? What? Well, uh, a full body massage. I look over my shoulder at him. Or we can just stick with the other duties. I laugh and Anakis' ears come back up. He continues to brush for a while longer before finally setting it aside. There, looks much better now. I gently run a hand over my hair. I have to agree that it feels softer than, I, than it's ever felt before. But anyway, Kiska, I'm looking forward to these months ahead with you. I am too. <laughs> I feel like I'll be playing this game for a while, more than close to our wrestling. It's probably gonna end in like, at like episode three or four. Four, I'm guessing three. Even though we started off a bit poorly. I look back at the wolf, at his earnest but tentative smile. He's definitely a man of contradictions, rash half of the time, but considering most of the time. I'm not sure what to make of him, but at this point I feel like I can at least trust him. That's saying a lot after what he put me through. I smile back. Yeah, me too. Okay, next day. Hamicus wakes me up by gently shaking my shoulder. Hey, hey, Kitsuka, wake up. Hey, look, listen. I roll over on my sofa, 
ruggedly pulling the blanket up around me as I shiver. Ugh, it's so cold in here. Oh, I can turn up the heat if you'd like. It's just that I tend to sweat a little when it's too warm. Could, could just give me a better blanket. Of course. I'm in just my underwear. My romantic candor underwear. Last night, Amicus had shown me a bit awkwardly how to tie it on. While it's comfortable, it always feels a little loose, and there's a constant worry that it's just going to drop off at some point. Anyway, we should get going soon. Alex is probably waiting for us. Already. I rub the sleep from my eyes, drawing the blanket around myself a bit more tightly. For what? We're going to the island for a picnic. You wanted something to do, didn't you? Oh yeah, right. I get up and grab my new robe off the back of the sofa. Don't bother with a shower today since we'll be swimming. Well, I will anyway. I'm not going to... Well, a, be a picnic in to the beach? Maybe? Nikis moves to the bathroom and pulls out a large glass bubble filled with a clear liquid. He pours it into the glass cap and notices me watching. Oh, would you like to try some? I th suppose your species cares about dental hygiene, considering your teeth look alright. What is it? A wash that simply cleans the teeth, keeps the breath from becoming offensively odorous. He holds out the cap and I take it from him as he just pours the liquid straight into his mouth. I sniff it and though I expected a minty smell, it's floral instead. Is this all you use to clean your teeth? Anika swishes the liquid around in his mouth for a while and spits it into the sink. It removes any surface level debris, but you should get a deeper cleaning from a Jordan at least once a week. I can show you that later too if you'd like. That kind of sounds terrifying. <laughs> kind of sounds like just the dentist every week. Maybe. Honestly, you're supposed to use this every morning, but I forgot yesterday and all the, the excitement that we had. I left the liquid filled cap to my mouth and with just a, just a little hesitation, I pour it in. Taste reminds me of walking into a room that's just been sprayed with air freshener. That's not a taste. <laughs> it's, it's, it's more of a smell, but okay. Not exactly pleasant, but when I spit it into the sink, I notice bits of what I assume to be plague floating down the drain, and my mouth does feel a lot more fresh. I guess it works. Anika seems impatient, though, shifting his weight from one weight from one foot to the other. Ready, Kitsuka? Uh, yeah, sure. Do you have bathing suits or something? Uh, like clothes for swimming. Anika steps out of the room and into the main hallway as I follow him. At the same time, I finish tying on my robe, trying to make sure everything is correctly in place. No, we swim nude. But if you prefer to have something on, you could use your undergarments. I can't imagine that would be comfortable, but Alex does it. Just as he says the cat's name, I see him standing in the hall, carrying a heavy-looking basket in both arms. Once he sees us, he smiles. Hello, Hamikis. Hello, Kitsuka. It's good to see you again. How are you this morning? I'm about to respond, but Hamikis is already speaking. Good, good. You've got all the food, Alex? Uh, yeah. Though, are you sure it's not against protocol that I took all of this? Well, it would be if I didn't approve it. Now let's go. Alex and I follow the excited wolf swishing tail as we head toward the front arc ways, an area that I haven't been to before. Ahem. Looks like someone may, might be disagreeing with what we'll be doing. I hear a familiar grunt, and we all stop and turn around. Kaido stands there watching us, stoic as always. Where might you three be off to? Er, hello Kaido, we're going for a swim. A swim? I can't tell exactly what's going on behind that visor, 
but the tone in his voice doesn't seem all that enthusiastic. And he seems to sense it too. Yes? A moment of silence goes by. You know you have combat training today, Hamicus. Well, yes, but only for part of the day. We'll be back shortly after noon. Kato's face twitches and I can sense the disapproval coming off on him in waves. Then he turns his head slightly in my direction. You're taking the pets? I quickly fix my face into a middle distance stare. Yes, I thought we could all use a little fresh air. Kato goes on staring for a moment, and I start to believe what Hanukkah said about Kato not having a good mood. Yeah, I feel like we might not go be going to the picnic anytime soon. Finally, the whole wolf turns his attention back to Hamicus. Well, I have some of my own duties to take care of this morning, but I expect you to be in the amphitheater by the 11th hour. Do not be late. With that, he turns his socks off down the hall before disappearing around a marble corner. Hanukkah lets out a breath. Ah, thought he was going to cancel our ironing altogether. I thought so, too. Alright, let's go before anyone else tries to stop us. Hanukkah quickly turns toward the arcways again and leads us out into the warm morning air. You seem very eager, Hanukkah. Well, I haven't been swimming for weeks now, and I need a good exercise. As we walk, I notice Alex huffing and puffing, struggling with a basket, so I hold out my hand. Here, do you need help? Oh, I don't want to inconvenience you. Come on. It's a basket. I reach out and take the handle of the basket and Alex doesn't resist as I pull it out of his paws. It's heavy, but not impossible to carry. I have to it in both my hands as I we walk down the path towards the lake. Are you sure it's not too heavy? I'm fine, though I think someone else might be able to handle it a bit before, better than us, especially since I imagine it's mostly his food. Anka's ears perk at my pointed statement. Oh, is it heavy? Anka turns and yanks the basket from me, easily swinging it in one paw. I should have said something, though I have to give it back once we get to the shore. I'll be swimming on the island. I frown. Is it far? Well, of course you'll be taking the sightseer. What's that? Alex moves up to walk alongside me. You'll see, it's sort of a hovercraft or sightseeing, as the name implies. Yeah, probably. <laughs> After a few minutes, we reach the shore where there's a small gaze bow with various boats underneath it. There's also what looks, sort of looks like a jet ski, and next to that is just a glass, glass box with an open top. It's what Alex and Amicus walk up to, the wolf leaning over to drop the picnic basket inside. Once he does that, he strips off his underwear and tosses it into the glass craft as well. I look away and notice Alex do the same, his ears down as he blushes furiously. Trying to ignore the wolf, I walk up to the strange little craft, noticing that there's an open space on the side of the box that allows us to get in. The floor is glass as well, and I can see the dirt and ve vegetation underneath us. Race you to the island! Anka cheerfully waves at us before running into the lake, the wolf's bushy tail swooshing around over his naked butt. Ugh, so inappropriate. Alex shakes his head and, and turns to a slanted glass panel attached to the side of the craft. He touches it and several bright characters come to life on the screen. A few seconds later, although a glass craft levitates off the ground and starts to move over the water, a bit a very small slow a bit at a very slow pace. Whoa, what is this this thing? A sightseeing craft, parental tech tech, so it's very safe and easy to navigate. So you can basically just um, hover hover over uh water, I guess. 
I watch as if he start to float over the slightly choppy water. Choppy water. I guess already have about 10 meters out in front of us. He's a pretty good swimmer. We're just slow. That's why he turned this into a race, because he knows we won't beat him, even if we're going at full speed. Sure enough, Amicus starts to win the gap. As Alex ears twitching about as he navigates our craft, looking left and right while avoiding looking at the water altogether. Do you not like swimming? Oh, I hate large bodies of water. It's a bit stressful coming out here, honestly. But the eye is serene, and for the most part, it makes the trip worth it. I guess he's a cat, so he doesn't really like water. Ah, feelings are kind of like that on my planet, too. I cringe inwardly as I almost reveal the name of my planet. It was pretty blatant, but Alex goes on like he didn't even notice. Well, yes, similar origins at all, but honestly I'm a bit surprised that you're doing so well yourself, or that you even decided to come out here. That comes up as a little strange to me, but I'm distracted watching Amicus get closer to the island. Maybe only about 50 meters now. I start to get an idea, though. Turning by the distance between us, Amicus and the island, I feel like I might be able to beat him. Me? Swimming? I, I mean, I, I know how to swim, but I'm super slow. <laughs> you wouldn't want me to, to do a swimming race against you. You'd beat me easily. I grin and start stripping off my robe. What are you doing? We're not at the island yet. Alex blushes furiously again, looking away. I'm gonna beat him. What? I grab onto the edge of the glass barrier and swing my legs over it. No! Alex actually tries to lunge for me, his paws just barely missing as I plunge into the lake. I don't have much time to think about why, because I'm instantly surrounded by freezing cold water. I come up, gasping with the shock of it before I spot the direction of the island and start swimming toward it. That was the worst, worst decision I ever made. It's been a while since I've really had the chance to swim. I've always been pretty good at it, though, and soon enough I get into the familiar motions of putting one arm ahead of the other while turning my head to take breaths. While this is going on, I can still hear Alex shouting behind me. But then, just as I'm feeling them out again on Amicus, I get rammed by something heavy and furry that suddenly starts to pull me into its grasp. At first, I wonder if I've been captured by some kind of adjustment sea monster. Maybe that's why Alex is freaking out. But just as I'm about to resign myself to that fate. A certain wolf? Kitska, don't worry, I've got you. I stop fighting against the big furry arms wrapping around me as I feel Hamikus kicking his legs under mine, sort of pulling me towards the island that's just a few dozen meters away now. O what are you doing? I try to pull away, but Hamikus keeps me in a fierce, fierce death grip, refusing to lose no at all. By gallon. I look up and see Alex just dumping, dumping out the basket full of food into the sights here before throwing the basket at me. Use this, it will keep you above water. What? It hits me in the face before gently bobbing away in the waves. What the hell is going on? I try to pull away from Hamikus one last time, but give up, leaning into his chest with a bewildered expression on my face. He kicks his feet awkwardly under mine before I finally feel our feet drag into the shifting sand under the water. Even then, Anakis doesn't let me go. He keeps his firm grip around my wrist as he pulls me to the shore, bringing us onto the little island. Are you alright? Anakis puts his paws on my shoulders, his wide eyes looking into mine, breathing heavily. Yes, what the hell just happened? I rub my nose where the basket hit me in the face, and that's when Alex's little croft gen pushes, pushes gently onto the sand. He hops out, running up to us. 
I don't know what happened, Amicus. He just jumped out. I'm sorry I couldn't stop him. Alex bows deeply, Earth's flat and trembling. What? I start to wonder if maybe there's something in the water that I wasn't supposed to come into contact with. I think they were just scared to death for me, but come on, I was doing fine. I look at my skin, but everything seems fine. I finally look up at Hamikos, trying to ignore his dick as it swings around between his legs. Hamikos seems to notice at the same time and covers up his crutch with his paw, keeping the other on my shoulder. Can you just explain to me what happened? Hamikos frowns at me. Well, you can't swim. You're hopeless in water. That's why I wanted you in the craft. Alex's lips tremble a bit, as if about to cry. You're not born with natural swimming abilities. Whenever a primate falls into the water, they're almost sure to drown. Are you sure you're okay? I'm so, so sorry. <laughs> the ways they explain to me how primates work reminds me that they might still might not consider me to be on the same intelligence level as them. It's like I don't know my own speci species capabilities, that I just jump in because I'm a stupid barbarian. It irritates me, but both of them look almost traumatized. Especially Hamicus. The ball not concealing his crotch is still firmly locked on my shoulder, as if worried I'm going to be running off into the water again. Guys, I can swim. I mean, yeah, it's not natural for us, but we can learn. I've known how to swim since I was a kid. He still stared back at me, as if not understanding. Really? Well, yeah, do you think I just jumped out of the thing to just drown myself? Ankus lets go of my shoulder to cover his dick with both paws now. I don't know, I know you're unhappy here, so I wasn't sure. I laugh. I'm not that unhappy. I'm fine. And you know, I'm not an idiot. I thought you'd know me by this by now, Hamicus. Things go quiet then. Alex looking off the side with his ears down. Hank is standing awkwardly and covering his crotch with both paws. So, did I ruin our outing? No, no, I just need to remember that you're not a typical child. Now, uh, let's try to relax and have some fun. It's the old reason we came out here, after all. Hank, Alex, Alex still looks a bit dejected, looking off towards the sights here. I ruined our food. I'm sorry. Alex bows again. I remember how Alex isn't really supposed to know about my intelligence, or anything about me, really. But if he's bothered by the conversation that just took place, he's not showing it. Anka shrugs. Stop bowing, it makes me feel strange. The naked wolf ambles over to the craft as he leans over to look at the cluttered mess inside. He still lifts and we get a view of his butt again. Alex looks away, flushing, but at this point I think I've given up on trying not to see the various naked parts of this wolf. Being in the nude seems pretty natural for him, even if he tries to hide it from us. I think we can salvage a decent meal out of, the, out of this. The wine's good. Aka slips a large ball of wine into the air, still not turning around. I'll, I'll sort through it, Amicus. Please enjoy your swimming exercises in the meantime. Alex quickly moves to start gathering up the food, head down. Well, alright, and ears up, Alex. We're here to have fun. Alex puts his ears up, but doesn't lift his head to look at us. Oh, right. The wolf grins at me, dipping his muzzle down at his crotch. The cats are just like you when it comes to this sort of thing. Anyway, I'll get in the water so you won't have to keep averaging your eyes. You should join me now that you know you can swim, Kitsuke. I can't swim as, as good a, as you, probably, but I can swim. I'll start to follow, then look back at the cat. Uh, do you need help, Alex? Alex shakes his head quickly, and I can see that he's still blushing. Go on and, s go on and swim, Kitsuke. I'll just be sunbathing anyway. There isn't much room in the sights here for two people, and Hamicus seems to be waiting for me, so I follow the wolf out towards the water. 
intelligent conversation and a swimming partner. I have a pet that can do it all. Apparently not, not lie at being dumb. But we can't have everything. Echo shoulders me as, he, as we walk along the beach, making me stumble. Hey! I say it warningly, even though I know he's joking. You know, I have to wonder why you'd take me out here if you didn't think I could swim. Everyone enjoys the beach whether they can swim or not. I know someone who re in real life who doesn't like beaches at all. Sand becomes too hot as I walk along the beach, so I have to jog the last 10 meters or so, or so to the wet sand, sighing as a wave cools my burning feet. Amkis catches up. Too hot? I suppose I should remember that you are a bit more fragile than the other species. Fragile? Well, a bit. I mean, when we fought in the ship, I had to hold back a lot. I gave Hamikus a shove, off stumbling more than he probably would have if he wasn't covering up his junk. Whoa, hey! With that, I wade out into the shallows, the water quickly coming up to, to my shoulders. I stick to the shore, treading water as I watch Hamikus splash around, doing a sort of lunging swim that reminds me of the butterfly stroke. Just a lot more clumsy. After a few minutes, he swims up next to me. You're doing alright? I'm still unsure of you being out in the water. I'm fine. Hey, don't start. I know what I'm doing. Alright, alright. But even experienced swimmers can have accidents. So let me know if you need help or anything. Hanka stands right in front of me. His foot plastered tightly against his chest. I will. Wolf sheets his eye from the sun and with a pause he looks around. Anyway, do you want to have a race around the island? We can stay in the shallows. I actually used to do it with Cass all the time as a pup. I look around the small island, sending the distance is short enough so that I can manage it. Alright, sure. Alright, Kitska, but be warned, I won't go easy on you just because you're a primate. I swim past Hamicus. Go! Oh, hey! I hear the wolf splash noisily behind me as he tries to catch up. I do fairly well for the first half of a little race, managing to get around the backside of the island without the wolf catching up to me. I notice that this part of the island is covered in dense trees and vegetation with no beach to speak of. I feel like in the long term we're gonna, gonna get catched on. It's, a, it's at this point that Hamicus overtakes me with his big lunging strokes breathing hard each time he comes up. I realize how hard he's trying, and I wonder if he's actually afraid of losing. It's clear that there's a competitive edge to him, and I guess that makes sense if he's so determined to beat Cassius to the throne. As we come around the final bend, I fall further behind, quickly losing stamina as the muscles burn in my arms and legs. Anka seems to notice and slows down a bit towards the end, allowing me to catch up to some be before he reaches the same spot we st started at. For a moment we both just gasp in breath for breath in the shallows, though Hamicus grins. <laughs> I win, huh? I roll my eyes and wait until I can breathe evenly again. Whatever, you got way more muscle than I do. Doesn't mean shit. Bodybuilders probably don't swim as much as professional swimmers, so they're not as good. Well, maybe they, maybe they swim from time to time, but they're not, probably not as good as professional swimmers. That isn't really an advantage. Hanika still breathes, breathes heavily, and I wonder how much effort he actually put into beating me. Besides, I put all this fur waving me down, and you don't. You know, competitive swimmers actually shave their fur down near the skin. Makes me wonder what a shaved wolf would look like. Guess I just have bad stamina. Actually, you did a lot better than I thought you would. Had me worried the first few minutes. What do you call that swimming style? Uh, I don't know. I think it's just called freestyle. Yankus moves closer. He's breathing finally under control. Could you teach me? Swim. Looks like you've already got that down. I mean, your style of swimming. You bit me, didn't you? Why would you want to learn my style? I say that, but I think I know what Hamicus is getting at. 
He has a very clumsy way of swimming, sort of like he's fighting the water itself. And having his arms blowing some droplets of water from his nose. He looked effective. I'd just like to try it if you're willing to show me. I smile. Alright. I guess we're never winning against him ever again. Not like we won the first time we faced him in a swimming battle. For the next hour, I show the wolf how to swim freestyle. Freestyle, sorry. The beginning kind of feels like I'm teaching a toddler how to swim. Well, the first few tries end up with him thrashing around in the water until like he's about to drown, showering me with lake water until I have to reach out and grab him to make him stop. I start to start with the arms first, standing in the shallows and showing how I put one arm ahead of the other in sort of a rhythm. I have so much trouble reading. Ah, uh, again I have to stand close to the naked wolf grabbing his big furry arms and showing him how to move them. Once he has that down, he quickly learns how to get his feet into the mix and pretty soon he's swimming back and forth, picking up speed to the point that I have no hope of keeping up with him. I realize then that Hammock is a very fast learner. Ah, this is so much better. Do you know any other styles? Hammock is paddles happily around me. Well, I guess back floating, but not, no, not really. I'm not a professional swimmer. And he stands, water running down his furry body. Want to race again? He grins at me. I laugh. No, I'm exhausted after teaching you all of that. Oh, don't be such a pup. Are you afraid of losing again? And he swings to lighten his words. <laughs> Think about flicking him on the nose but like he's a misbehaving dog, but I resist the urge. I wouldn't have. No, I'm tired and I'm hungry and if I stay out any longer I'd probably get gonna get a sunburn. Reminding Hank that there is food on the beach seems to change his mind and he follows me into the shallows. Oh, that's right. You have no fur. Sometimes I get burned around my nose if I stay out too long. Are you alright? If the hammock is rub a paw over my shoulders and I shiver. Well, we'll know by tonight, but I feel alright. As we trudge out in onto the beach, I see Alex curled up on a blanket, his fruit bright and shiny under the sun. Judging by the place around him, he's already eaten. Annika chuckles. What's your feel, Ian? Anyway, you'd better keep your eyes off me. I'm the first to try before I put my undergarments back on, so I'm going to stop covering up for you. Automatically, my eyes start wandering towards the wolf before snapping back to look straight ahead. But then I start to think, I'm going to be here for a while, as far as I know. Maybe I should get used to the whole new day thing now. <laughs> you want me to start censoring stuff already? I think that's a perfect way to end this episode. <laughs> yep, you won't see anything in this episode. Not a single, not a single uh, skin of his flesh. You won't see anything. Yeah, it's kind of cruel, but you know, um, I mean, I've been recording this for a while, like around 15 minutes and I think it's a good point to stop now we, we finally have a choice in this game so I think it's it it's good that we stop now so yeah thank you uh, guys for watching this video don't forget to leave a like to subscribe and to comment too and yeah we'll see each other in the next video goodbye